shortened, kind of talked out version of this sermon, but I'm doing it again because I felt like it was a good one. So, that's the dog. Yeah, yeah. So, we're going to be talking about dogs again. And I, see, now I got the little thing. 10 best thing. movies of <laughs> 2016. Did it make that? Yep, yeah, number awesome. nine. Awesome. Okay. Well, it was a good one. Um, but, yeah. So, if you just joined us, we're going to be talking about Desmond Doss today. So, <laughs> um, today we're going to be talking about Christian character. So, let's start this. <clears throat> Come on in, sit down, sit down. So, as I said, today we're going to talk about what it means to have a Christian character. Now, FM 6 22 Army Leadership defines character as a person's moral and ethical qualities, helps determine what is right, and gives a leader the motivation to do what is appropriate, regardless of the circumstances or the consequences. An informed ethical conscience consistent with the Army values strengthens leaders to make the right choices when they are faced with tough issues. Since Army leaders seek to do what is right and inspire others to do the same, they must embody these values. Now, from this definition, it's pretty clear that in order to have a good character, it stems from good values. Because as the army is clearly defined, in order to have character, you must embody the army values. Well, today we're going to be talking about Christian character and what it means to have Christian values. Now you may ask, well, where are these values found? Where can I go to see a list of the Christian values? Well, it just so happens that Jesus actually gave an entire sermon on just this subject. And in fact, it's one of the few complete sermons of Jesus that we have. And it's called the Sermon on the Mount, and it's found in Matthew chapter 5 through 7. And what you find there is very, very interesting. Because, much like the definition that we just heard, it doesn't focus on a series of laws. In fact, Jesus goes above and beyond those laws, and he makes it so apparent that it's not just about following those laws, but the values behind those laws. So for example, what happens is, Jesus says, you have heard it said, you shall not commit adultery. So there's the law. But Jesus says, but I say unto you, whoever looks at a woman lustfully has committed adultery in his heart. So what Jesus is saying is that when you even look at another man or another woman, and you think about having her sex in your, in, in your mind, or you're like, dang, she's hot, or she's fine, or yeah, I'd like a piece of that, or mm, I want him. You have already broken the value behind that law, which of course is to respect your fellow man, your fellow woman. And so not only does Jesus talk about adultery, Jesus says, you shall not murder, but he says, or if you have heard, again, but he says, but if you're angry with your brother, you have already killed him in your mind. That's powerful. That's powerful. That is a value system that we do not have today in America. That is a value system that we don't often live up to. In fact, Jesus goes so far to say, at the very end, or not at the very end, but in the middle there, he says, you are to love your enemies as brothers. That you are to, if someone slaps you, turn the other cheek so that they can slap the other cheek. I don't know about you, but that's not my first reaction if somebody slaps me. I mean, let's just keep it that's real. That's for real. <laughs> if somebody that's slaps true. me, I'm going to come out swinging. <laughs> But that's not what we're supposed to be. That's not the value system that Christ is trying to get us to. In fact, Christ lists all these different things. He says, 
He talks about lying. He talks about lust. He talks about going the extra mile. By the way, you know, we've heard that term, go the extra mile. That, that comes from this sermon. You know what that actually means? The example that Christ is giving is he's talking about when a Roman legionnaire would conscript a random person, because they were allowed to do this, because they had to carry their packs on their backs, which their packs were about 60 pounds. Um, and that's just their packs. That doesn't include their, their, their breastplate or their iron shield or their, um, or their javelin or their gladius. None of their gladius, sorry. None of that. That's just their supplies. So that's their food, their water, their ruck. And they could hand that off to someone and say, hey, you, you are going to carry this for me for a mile, a 60-pound ruck. And they could compel any random person to do that off the street. And Jesus says, so when somebody is forcing you to do something that you don't even want to do against your will, he says, go the extra, go a second mile with that person. That's what it means to go the extra mile. It's not about giving it your all. <laughs> That's how we use it, right? That's not what that's about at all. In fact, Jesus says, if somebody tries to steal from you or sue you wrongfully, he says, give it to them. Just give it to them. That is a vastly radical value system. And like I said, he ends this whole thing with, therefore you are to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. So again, Christ here is pointing us to God. Our value system is to be God's value system. We are to look to God and say, that's my standard. God's values are my values. But I want to back up here a little bit because that is such a high standard that I'm saying to myself, how in the world can I do that? How can I accomplish something so great? Well, you know, I want to look at um, a hero, a, a military hero here, for an example. Because he, he really kind of shows us the way and how to do this. How many of you guys saw the movie Hacksaw Ridge? Heard about it? I heard about it. Yeah. I it's a great movie. Highly recommend it. Very gory, though. So, I mean, there's some stuff that clearly Mel Gibson took some liberties with. But it's the story's a good story. And the funny thing is, is that the, uh, the Medal of Honor citation is actually more insane than the movie. So, I don't have the movie, but I am going to read to you right now the Medal of Honor, the official citation for Desmond Doss. So this is his story. He was a company aid man when the 1st Battalion assaulted a jagged escar escarpment 400 feet high. As our troops gained the summit, a heavy concentration of artillery, mortar, and machine gun fire crashed into them, inflicting approximately 75 casualties and driving the others back. Private First Class Doss refused to seek cover and remained in the fire-swept area with the mini stricken, carrying all 75 casualties one by one to the edge of the escarpment and lowering them on a rope-supported litter down the face of a cliff to friendly hands. So he did that all night. He was up there by himself with the Japanese as they were going systematically sneaking through, killing uh, anybody that they found alive. As, as the wounded soldiers were trying to fight back as best they could. Is he alive today? Is he, uh, he died in 2006. But, okay. And so, as he's up there, he's literally praying to God, one more, one more. But the crazy thing is, that's only the first sentence. Let me finish. On May 2nd, he exposed himself to heavy rifle and mortar fire in rescuing a wounded man 200 yards forward of the lines on the same scarpet. And two days later, he treated four men who had been cut down while assaulting a strongly defended cave, advancing through a shower of grenades to within eight yards of enemy forces in a cave's mouth. When he dressed his comrades' wounds before making four separate trips under fire to evacuate them to safety, on May 5th, he unhesitantly braved enemy shelling and small arms fire to assist an artillery officer. 
He applied bandages, moved his patient to a spot that offered protection from small armored cars, while artillery and mortar shells fell close by, and painstakingly administered plasma. Later that day, when an American was severely wounded by fire from a cave, Private First Class Doss crawled to him where he had fallen 25 feet from the enemy position, rendered aid, and carried him 100 yards to safety while continuously exposed to enemy fire. On May 21st, in a night attack on the ground near Shuri, he remained in exposed territory while the rest of his company took cover, fearlessly risking the chance that he would be mistaken for an infiltrating Japanese and giving aid to the injured while he was himself seriously wounded in the legs by the explosion of a grenade. Rather than call another aid man from cover, he cared for his own injuries and waited five hours for litter bearers, reached him, and started carrying him to cover. The trio was caught in an enemy tank attack, and Private First Class Doss, seeing a more critically wounded man nearby, crawled off the litter and directed the bearers to give him their first attention to the other man. Awaiting the litter bearer's return, he was again struck by a sniper bullet while being carried off the field by a comrade, this time suffering, suffering a compound fracture of one arm. With magnificent fortitude, he bound a rifle stock to his shattered arm as a splint and then crawled 300 yards through rough terrain under fire to the aid station. Through his outstanding bravery and unflinching determination in the face of desperately dangerous conditions, Private First Class Doss saved the lives of many soldiers. His name became a symbol throughout the 77th Infantry Division for outstanding gallantry, far and above the call of duty. That's insane. That is a straight up miracle. 75 men in one night, he lowered down this encampment. And he did this by rigging up a rope um, a Swiss seat, essentially, and, and lowering them down. 75 men that he had to drag off the battlefield, one at a time. I don't know if you guys have ever done the buddy aid carry, but that's a lot of weight. And uh, if you can see, Private Doss was never a big man. He was a very scrawny guy. It is, there is nothing short of a miracle. That entire time, he was praying, one more, one more. The entire night, he just kept saying to himself, one more. He kept asking God for one more soldier. One more soldier. And you know, the beautiful thing is, he didn't just save the American soldiers. He also saved Japanese soldiers. He took them down as well. Um, he lowered anybody and everybody that he could find that was still breathing. He got them off that rock. And when I look at that, I just see an amazing commitment to a value system that I find uncommon today. You know, Jesus ends his Sermon on the Mount this way. He says, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Private Doss, when he was up there on that encampment, the amazing thing wasn't all the things that he did. The amazing thing that he accomplished that day was that he did the will of the Father. He prayed to God, saying, give me one more life to save. And that's the kind of prayer that God is all too happy to answer. That's the kind of prayer that God says we can do miracles with. Because that is his will. And yet, Jesus doesn't end there. He says, because many will say to me on that day, Jesus continues, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? And then I will declare to them, Jesus, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. You see, it's not the things that we do that make us people of good Christian character. It's not how 
we do things. It's who we know. See, Jesus doesn't deny that they did these things. Jesus doesn't say you didn't perform miracles. Jesus doesn't say, no, you didn't cast out demons. No, Jesus says, get away from me. I don't know you. And so, same with Doss. The beautiful thing about Doss is that in the end, he's injured. He's wounded. You don't see this in the movie. But his final request as he's getting shipped out on a, on a ship is he says, tell word to my men that I lost my Bible. After the battle was over, every single person in the company, from the company commander down to the lowest private, combed that battlefield to find Private Doss's Bible. Why? Because they knew who Doss was. And they knew his will. And so likewise, knowing God inspires us to be like God in our values, in our character. And so as we go from here today, as we go into our lives, as we look out on what we do from a day-to-day -day basis and how we live and who we talk to and the way we interact with people, I have one question for you. Do you know Jesus? Thank you, Liz. Close. Dear Holy Father, Lord, I just want to ask you that as we go through this week, that you impress upon us to know you better. That you impress upon us to live as you would have us. To do your will, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen.